through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic. Hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin. Episode 246. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of April 16th. Mm -hmm. Halfway uh, through April. Tax day came and went. Yeah. Did you survive? I did. I barely did. I did. <laughs> we're about uh, a quarter of the way through the year. About halfway through I was like, I don't even want to pay taxes. I'm going to go on Wesley Snipe. Like, I totally empathize with you, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty a pretty decent uh, release week. I mean, there's some pretty noteworthy stuff yeah. coming out. Yeah, or miss. For you know, me. it's every week. Yeah, every week. that's true. That's true. That's why we only pick a few because yes. otherwise it would just be like, here's the hit and here's all the misses. Right. Another Zumba DVD came out. I uh, know. I, I, we could all use more Zumba DVDs. It's true. Especially since they're getting Zumba? caught. I don't, I, I don't know. know. I, all I know is they, they got caught with the prostitution thing in LA. That makes Zoom, me even more Zumba excited. Studio. Exactly. See, that should come out on DVD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll start with the big release yes. of the week uh, a film that won two Academy Awards this last year, a film from a beloved filmmaker and that is Django Unchained. Yes. This is the latest from Quentin Tarantino about a slave who becomes unchained, as the yes. title implies, yes. and uh, goes to track down his wife. Uh, depending on how you, uh, how you view it and how you look at it, either a black slave revenge fantasy or a white slave revenge fantasy. Some people, depending on your argument. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it is a white filmmaker making a movie about a black slave revolting. Yeah, that's so, true. You know, there's some problems with that. But it's still a great film. It's I so love the film. Don't get me wrong. Film, yeah. I loved it. Saw uh, it Christmas Day. Hey, that's a good out. way to celebrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, Christoph Waltz won for Best Supporting Actor. Totally. Quentin Tarantino won for the screenplay. It's, also it's a very, very entertained film. Though, perhaps a little long. Yeah. Uh, you could yeah. argue that there's some not stuff that could be cut out or cut down. Yeah, not his best, but not definitely not his worst. No. And you know it's 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 a fun movie. It comes out on Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy, ultraviolet, which are all good. Mm -hmm. um, special features a little bit lacking. Sadly, there's a remembering J. Michael Riva, the production design of Django Unchained, about a 13-minute little featurette there. Which I mean, it's glad that they're yeah. doing it, but you know, 13 minutes is a little a little slim. light. It's a little slim. And uh, reimagining, reimagining the spaghetti western, the horses and the stunts of Django Unchained. Again, about 13, 14 minutes mm. special feature at there. It's only specifically horses and stunts, man. You can just talk about Django, the the remake of Django as a whole thing, and I feel like you could talk for 13 minutes. Hell, we talked for 13 minutes about DVDs. It's pretty sure. Come it's on. It's funny to think that they just talk about how. Like extensive the lengths they go not to hurt any horses on the film. Like this is a feature at like <laughs> we didn't want to hurt any horses. Isn't After that after HBO's luck? That's yeah, exactly. Like they, that's like a thing that has can't, to be. Can we just pretty much assume that's like a given? Like, see, I, I thought so too until HBO's luck was out and a bunch of horses died. So clearly, yeah. I guess still there's some people out there yeah. shooting animals. Uh, there's another feature about the costume shooting. designs of Sharon Davis, which mm. again, 12, 13 minutes long, and then there's a uh, some. Tarantino XX Blu-ray and mm. Django and Chain soundtrack promos, which are like a minute long a piece. So, not really anything particularly exciting. No yeah. Tarantino commentary or anything. No Jamie Foxx commentary, anything yeah. like that. So, perhaps they're saving that for a real release. I don't know. Maybe, maybe uh, for all we know, in a couple of years, this will be a Criterion release, and it'll get might a be crazy that right now. Yeah, super in depth. You know, Quentin Tarantino, 20 years of filmmaking, blah, 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 blah. So, so. Could be. Could be. Good guess. Moving right along, mm -hmm. though, we have perhaps one of my favorite titles of the last <laughs> year, and that is A Haunting in Connecticut 2, Ghosts of Georgia. Yeah. Because, of course, you know, when you're talking about Connecticut, you immediately think of Georgia. Totally. Because yeah. those two things are directly yeah. interrelated. Yeah, because, you know, why not, right? Yeah. Civil War. Right, exactly. I guess that's the only connection I can make. So, um, more. so it's about a young family that moves into a historic home in Georgia, only learning that they're not the only houses in the house's only inhabitants. Soon they find themselves in the presence of a secret rising from underground and threatening to bring down anyone in its path. Awesome, mm -hmm. you know, that's a winner <laughs> with a title like So the ghost is from Georgia. Are they in Connecticut or are they no, also in Georgia. in Georgia? They're in Georgia. Yeah, Do it's they just, move back to Connecticut no, no. and take the ghost with them? There's just another film about people... Getting with, haunted in Connecticut. Yeah. So this is like Troll 2? Yeah, pretty okay. much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, but this one stars Chad Michael Murray and Katie Sackhoff. So... Take that is for this what you. This a sci-fi direct movie. No, no, not even, not even. <laughs> but Starbuck, man, come on, but, what are you doing? Um, I will say 
that both, I believe, the original Haunting in Connecticut mm -hmm. and this one are based on true stories. Ooh. I think the original one is one of the most uh, prolific hauntings in American history, and I think it was a really old time. We all know recall. Spencer is a Art Bell enthusiast. Yeah, it's true. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So. <laughs> but I will also say this one has uh, more extensive special features than even Django. It's hey, look at that. <laughs> audio commentary from director Tom Elkins, writer David Cogshaw, and producer Brad Kessel. Hmm. It's got um, a feature out about seeing ghosts the true story of the Wyricks. Interesting. Which I, I'm a big fan of that. You know, it's like Unsolved like Mysteries said, around yeah, the DVD yeah. right there. And then there are uh, deleted scenes with optional commentary from director Tom Elkins. Hmm. And a blooper reel for anyone who cares. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> it comes out on either Blu-ray, mm -hmm. Ultraviolet and DVD, or digital copy, or DVD, Ultraviolet and digital copy. You can't get them all in one, unfortunately. Okay. But, you know. But you can at least bit. get the digital copies with one of one the yeah. yeah, That's good. You know, it's, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to argue this is a great film. Though it does star Abigail Spencer, who I did interview at South by Southwest, so stay tuned for Check that. Check out on McGuffin for a complete, so completely different thing. <laughs> but you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna really try and sell you on this one. I mean, if you think a film that has a name like A Haunting in Connecticut Two: Ghosts of Georgia sounds awesome, yeah. I can't really help you. Like Big Ass Spider. Yeah, wow. right. That sounds better than this, <laughs> if you ask me. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna argue that. But um, yeah. And, and if, and if the DVD release of Haunting in Connecticut Two: Ghosts of Georgia wasn't spellbinding for you enough. Our we, next also, follow -up. Yeah, we also have Disney Nature, Wings of Life, mm -hmm. which is a documentary that delves into the realm of flowers and their pollinators. And personally, I just like that the Little plot stamen. synopsis has pollinators. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're not going to just leave it vague. Yeah. Really vague. Yeah. We're yeah. not going to talk bees or anything. No, we don't need to. Why be species specific? Hey, listen, it's narrated by Meryl Streep. Boom. There you go. There you go. Disney, Meryl Streep, nature documentary. All good things. Done. I will say, you Mic know, drop. I am kind of an enthusiast of Disney nature. I think it's their a Disney really... Disney nature movies in the last few they, years have really amped up their qual caliber. They've done some interesting topics. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like that they embrace the notion of releasing something every Earth Day. I mean, yeah. if you look at the bottom line, I suspect that they're not that profitable. Probably not. I mean, it's, I mean, I don't know if this is like a tax write-off or something for them. <laughs> Very well might be. Possibly. But uh, I, I just I appreciate that like they're really doing that every year consistently. Mm -hmm. They're always in some documentary about it. I feel it. like since Planet Earth, the uh, since Planet Earth came out, the like high caliber nature documentary yeah. has really like become a thing again. Yeah. No, I, I would agree with that. But I mean, a lot of that's been for TV, and so they yeah. do it theatrically. Which mm -hmm. I mean, I think they usually only do it for like a day or a weekend or something yeah, like that. Really short which run. Right around uh, Earth Day, of course. So it's a very unique sort of uh, element like that. Yeah. Uh, this year they have Disney Nature Bears oh, being okay. released, which sadly is the only special feature on this DVD. Uh, it's a Blu-ray DVD, I should know. Okay. So you got at least good. two formats going for you It'll there. Be pretty. But I mean. If you really like nature documentaries, mm -hmm. if you really want to support this kind of stuff yeah, so definitely. that they continue to make it, those would probably be the best reasons to do it. Exactly. If you're looking for special features or anything else, I would say it's probably not. And If you've got a kid that's easily entertained by bright moving pictures, put it on your crazy 80-inch Blu-ray. I, I bet it's probably some pretty beautiful stuff. I oh, mean, yeah. you think about all those like documentaries of smaller creatures and yeah. stuff like that. They tend to be pretty awesome. It's true. I mean, p pollinators, that's uh, quite... <laughs> hey, you know, somebody's got to teach you about the birds and the bees, Greg. Uh, um, yeah, and they'll probably talk about the bees are all dying off too. Uh, how about some killer bees? That would be awesome if they talked about killer bees. I, I would, hope I would really get on board with that. So maybe some uh, parasitic wasps. Be okay yeah, with that now we're talking. But I don't know if they actually pollinate. Yeah. But I'll Who cares about pollination anymore? <laughs> we're talking about killer bees. This is what we're Disney talking. Nature, killer bees and wasps. Exactly. Next move after bears. Yeah. Finally, that brings us to our Criterion release that we're talking about. They've been killing it the last few weeks. Gotta say Why the best for it? Yeah, and that is Repo Man. Ah, uh, yes. This is the Emilio Estevez, Harry Dean Stanton classic from, was it 1984? Yeah. Directed by Alex Cox. About, um, was it a grocer who loses his temper and quits? He befriends a Repo Man and sort of gets involved in the Repo game. Yes. Which involves uh, a government lab losing a package that has <laughs> strange effects on anyone who sees it. Um... Definitely a crazy yes. film. No this doubt This is one that. of those movies that uh, I feel embodies the cult classic. Yeah, I would uh, say that. Because I don't. I. I would. I am not saying I know for sure that it wasn't profitable when it came out, but I feel like this no. was not a movie that its initial release is where it got its popularity. This is not a widespread hit. No, this sure. is one of those like v underground VHS hits where it's like, here's this movie that seems really simple at first, but is very strange. Mm -hmm. And so I can see, you know. It, 
people not being okay with that. I don't know. It kind of almost feels like somewhat David Cronenbergian. Oh, totally. Like, like yeah, it, it's, I can it see seems it. like something that you would sort of feel that way about. And I or mean, like Carpenter. Yeah, you can see like, that. Yeah, early I mean, '80s Cro- Cronenberg or Carpenter. I mean, it's very, it's very kind of quirky, and I mean, this is one of those ones that's sort of a signature role for those who have seen it for Emilio Estevez yes. and Harry Dean Stanton. People always relate those two of them. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's definitely developed a cult following at the very least. You know, it's great that Criterion has gone to the trouble of releasing this. I mean, it's got cover arts for it, great too. Yeah, it's got an audio commentary from uh, Alex Cox and the cast. Awesome. Uh, it's got interviews with. Um, let's see, uh, Cox and a bunch of the cast as well. It's got deleted scenes and kind of funny. It's got a cleaned up television version of the film prepared <laughs> by Cox. So I think that's kind of kind of funny and quirky. It's sort of like you know, remember uh, Bully mm-hmm. when they released the, yeah. the the two versions of yeah. that, like the the school friendly one and then the regular one. One of these days, I hope to get a large Mel Brooks DVD Blu-ray collection, and I want them to have the original Spaceballs TV edit mm-hmm. where they put moron instead of asshole. Yeah. In. Because I watched that one a lot of times as a kid. So, TV edits, man. Yeah, and plus it's got a new high uh, definition digital restoration. Super See, Buzz Criterion, by Alex, Django Unchained. You gotta, you gotta, yeah. you gotta. We need more special features like do. Criterion does it. They do it well. What like, can we say? Like really, any more? Yes, sure. To some extent, like cover art and like actual physical weird box sets aside. Special features are really the selling point anymore for home ownership, I feel, yeah, for a lot of movies. I totally agree. Like, And so, you know, you pack something like that, it's totally going to be more worth it to do that than to just download Repo Man. Who hasn't seen Repo Man, yeah. you know? Uh, probably a lot of people, but... Go see Repo Man. Yeah. And if better. you don't like it, email Greg at MacGuffinPodcast.com. And of course, you can come to Scarecrow and rent it if you're a little hesitant the yes. first time instead yes. of just buying it. But it's it's probably worth, it's worth purchase. It. Yeah. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Join mm-hmm. us next time as we discuss Morgan Freeman yes. in honor of Oblivion. Mm-hmm. Looks like a fun one. It does. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv, Miro, Roku. Checking to get glue. Badges. Sticky. Get badges. Leave us some reviews on iTunes. Give us some up thumbs on the YouTubes. Yeah. Read some thumbs. comments there too. We'd yes. like to go back and forth yeah. with you, and uh, yeah. catch you next time.